Well, here we are. We're heading out to catch some big old bass. Um, it's summer vacation, so my youngest son has a little more flexibility for doing some bassing. So we got our aluminum John bow hooked up. We saw in the forecast that out in the Columbia Basin, it's not supposed to be windy this afternoon, which is like a miracle. Even though these, these windmills up here are spinning, they're spinning a little more than what we were hoping for. But uh, I think it'll be okay. But we're gonna go out and throw flies for bass. We're gonna try to catch them on uh, surface flies like dragonflies, poppers, and frogs. It's really wanted to be a surface game this afternoon because conditions are pretty good. It's the third week of June. And for the fly fisher, that's when things really kind of peak. Earlier in the year, when the water's colder, it's much tougher to get flies down, you know, four, five, six, eight feet where the bass are with flies. And so the tackle fishermen do much better. But once the bass are up in the shallows and willing to eat on the surface, fly fishermen might even have an advantage. So we're just bombing out to the, the basin. We're gonna fish a, a relatively small lake. Um, as a fly fisher, I think small lakes are really good. Like the smaller, the better, frankly. I mean, even ponds for crying out loud are like perfect. That way you're not competing with all the big bass boats and people throwing crank baits and spinner baits and all the hard tackle stuff. Um, you can really focus on structure and fishing small water and frankly, we're not that picky about the size of bass we catch. We'd love to stick a five pounder, but if we're catching one to two pound bass, we're super happy. So we'll check back in at the ramp and, and show you the lake that we're fishing. Well, we're getting set up and ready to go. And uh, like a lot of anglers, one thing that plagues uh, my youngest son is just knots. And this right here. So he's got this Reddington um, basket. It's Great rod, cast good, lines fine and everything, but a lot of these less expensive lines, they don't come with that neat, n nice, neat welded loop on the end. And it's just kind of hard as a beginner to get a nice new leader attached to that. And you can do like some loop to loop with mono and stuff, and that's all okay, but what's better is when it's just not a nice fly line to leader connection. And I'm gonna tie what's called an Albright knot, and that's gonna be, I'm gonna cut that loop off and I'm gonna tie essentially the equivalent of a nail knot, but a little bit stronger. It's gonna be an Albright knot. Let me do that real fast and I'll show you kind of how to solve that problem of putting a new leader on a fly line that's got no loop. All right, first problem averted. We got a nice, neat Albright knot and that thing flies through the air really good. It actually casts well, but uh, I like an Albright knot versus a nail knot because I don't need a tool. And you just gotta learn how to do it. Like there's tons of other videos. I'm not gonna teach you how to do it here. We got a seven and a half foot uh, 2X um, tapered leader to the Gorilla Dragon. That thing is nasty. It's got a weed guard on there. And uh, even the big bass just love that dragonfly. So we're hoping to get them on, uh, on the surface. We're gonna get the boat in the water, go throw some dragonflies and some frogs, see if we can't shake them loose. All right, here we go. We're just gonna work this frog right up near the shore. And it's just super important how this thing lands. So you see that little black spot right there? Right there, half on the weeds, half in the black spot. It's not a long cast, but man, it's gotta be accurate. And this thing is just a little tiny twitcher. You don't go crazy like a popper. That thing is just designed for those legs to shimmy and kind of shake and move. And then I'm gonna jump all the way up to this next black spot right up here. Landed in the reeds. I got a lucky bounce right there. There we go. Apparently no bass is too small for this giant foam slice frog. <laughs> it's the smallest bass I've ever caught on a frog, I think. That's awesome, man. Yeah, I gotta love it. It's pretty fun when he hammered it. They're looking for your mama. Well, it looks like we got a problem. We're a little weeded up with the electronic motor. These beautiful shallow weed beds have a lot of bass, but kind of hard to run this motor through them. So we're gonna take turns on the oars and just till we get out over the weeds. And uh, well, we didn't have much luck on the frog. Um, we got one small one after about 20 minutes and then had one other pretty good bite, but not big, but there's dragonflies. Look at this right here. There's dragonflies all over and occasionally we'll see a big splash. So we're gonna try the dragonfly 
And uh, I've done really well on dragonflies, even for bigger bass. We, we don't have to put it by the reeds. Dragonflies wind up anywhere. That's kind of one cool thing that's cool is you don't have to hit as close to the bank, but I like to just land it and then I ski it once. If they don't bite, we just keep moving. So I'm just gonna go ahead and blast one out like that. It lands, you know, you wanna make a nice cast with a nice delivery and then ski it like that once as though it made a crash landing. We let it sit, give it about five seconds. With largemouth, you wanna be patient. And uh, I can't help myself but try this spot right back in there. Let's see what happens. God, that looks fishy back there. Okay, a little slow twitch, nothing, nobody home. So we'll just keep moving up the bank. It's still a little bit early. Land it, there's more dragonflies, more dragonflies. We're trying to match the hatch here. Okay, nothing ate it. I just raise my rod and just gently ski it. Let it set again. Sitting, sitting, sitting. Nobody home, keep moving. All right, let's see if we can fish one out from under this tree here. A little skip cast. There's gotta be a fish way up under there. It's one thing that's fun about bass fishing is the casting. There's a lot of accurate technical casting when it comes to bassing around these trees, around the reeds. There's more dragonflies. They're everywhere. All right, all right, little strategy change. We're gonna switch up to my, uh, one of my favorite flies. This thing swims like crazy. I don't know if you can see it on the video, but man, that thing just, spin circles around itself it's nuts that thing is insane how it swims so we're going to work this shoreline we haven't been able to get anything on the frog we got a couple dinks on a little tiny jiggy worm just to get a fish in the boat but i like to fish this and then let it give it a good strip and then let it sit good strip let it sit and the bass will often take it right when it stops and i'll just strip it and it's a pretty sharp strip I like it like that. And it's got like this nice neutral buoyancy about it. So it stays up over a lot of these weeds and things. But we're gonna work this shoreline back into here. We'll start it by the bank, but they can bite anywhere here. Absolutely anywhere right in here. Well, they're not getting any bigger. There we go, little uh, it'll be a 10 pounder someday so we didn't get much on the surface let me get him released here nice little bass we'll take it um i switched up to this mini jiggy worm and uh we weren't getting them on the surface but this thing moves like crazy it's like a mop fly man it just it swims unbelievably well anyway there was a bass that was jumping at dragonflies right there a minute ago they keep jumping at the dragonflies, but oh, there was a bite. There he is. Another little guy. Why not? It's good for the skills and the reflexes. Yeah, good for the reflexes. We'll take it. More action than I was getting on my frog. Get a bite too. I don't care. It's a dinky bass, but I'm having fun. That was. It was a pretty nice bite, actually. And I just let it sink. Real slow is good for bass. So I'm just fishing these little tiny strips. Oh, there you go. What do you got? Yeah, you're winning this. Yeah, it is hard to beat, man. Came off at the boat. He didn't. He said he didn't even feel them come off. It was so small. Oh well, made your heart jump. Dude, I feel like the lunkers are just laid up on this under this tree. Right there. I'm gonna let the wind kind of drift mine up under the tree. 
And actually what you can do is you can actually kind of mend it and swim it that way. Yeah, swim it right through there. So when you get a curve in your line like that, that's not ideal, but I watch the curve in my line for the strike because I'll see the end of my fly line just tap a little bit. It's not always a big slam. Sometimes it's really, really, really subtle. We'll try one more over. I tell you, I feel like there's a little, little like schools out over here with these little guys. Yeah, oh, my bass flies. So many flies. Yeah, I feel like school just got out. I need to go a little further. My line got hung up. We're gonna throw a bomb right back in there, in that corner. Little pop strips. Pop, 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 pop. Gonna make that tail jump. And then you just set. Just come tight on it again, real subtle. All right, I think we should start working up this reed line again. We caught it. All right, we're just gonna drop it. Just keep dropping it right along these weeds here. A lot of little bass. The big bass stay pretty hidden. They're like, they stay buried in these weeds. This looks so fishy back there. Oh yeah, look at the minnows scooting around out there. Have this bass worm just, I, I see it out there and I swear the thing is real the way it works. Okay, let's go up where those minnows were scooching around. There he is. Oh, dang, dude. That had to have been the same big bass that was pushing that those minnows around. Is it, is it a good take? Yeah, it was a really good take. I should check my fly. Yeah, it's all straight. Oh, again. Yeah, there's 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 some bass back in there like chasing them around. Oh yeah, yeah, there's that big bass. Dude, that was him. He just went out to the right. Yeah, he went out here. I think he, I think the second cast I put over him scared him. That was, that was unbelievable. That's a good one, dude. I spotted it while backing out. That's a good bass. Holy smokes, dude, that thing's peeling line. Oh, that is a, oh. Yeah, that's a real, yeah, that's a good bass. So, uh, Jacob spotted it. It was holding right in here. We already fished. Oh, no, oh. no, that's mine. He just got wrapped in the weeds. Dude, I'm glad I have big tippet on. And an eight weight. This is why you use a. Glad this isn't the five weight. Yeah, I'm, this is why you use a burly rod for Don't these largemouth. Don't let her get under the boat. Oh. Dude, I'm trying. <sighs> get it. <laughs> dude, lip that girl. Dude. Oh my gosh. Dude, you Woo. spotted that thing. Lip that thing up. Just hold it. Hold it up. Let's see that thing. Look Let's see that, that bass, kid. Oh man, that is a dude. specimen right there. Yeah, you're a good guide, man. You might even earn yourself a little fishing time. What do you think Ooh, of that? I like the idea of that. Dude, that's a great <laughs> bass. That was great. We saw that bass. This water's so clear. Here, we'll get a we'll get a little release shot. Here. It's like a camera. No, you got it. Yeah, there you go, honey. Oh, there she goes. Dude, that was so cool. That was a sweet yeah, Jake spotted it, and we sight cast to it. <laughs> All right, how'd that go down? Uh, I was back inside of here because we were just going to go keep bank fishing, and I spotted her minnows are right there. She was protecting her minnows. Oh, that's what they were doing? Yeah, I think that's what she was doing. And so I spotted her just underneath the minnows and the weeds, and I'm like, Dad, big bass cast at it. Casts at it, takes it, and she runs off like... Dude, she ate yeah. so soft. I didn't even she know ate she so ate. She so soft, but ran so hard. It was. It was like gorilla. It was like gorilla yeah. warfare. I had to just.
put it in there and let it sink. And oh. then there wasn't even, yeah, they're jumping at dragonflies over there. And then just twitch my rod tip with that ultimate worm a couple times, that yarn, that yarn worm. It's like a San Juan worm for bass, yeah. dude. The, the way that is, that action on that thing is crazy. It is crazy. Okay, uh, we're gonna work our way up the lake and then uh, and then Jacob's gonna get on the deck here. Uh, he's get He gets the evening bite, I get the daytime bite. So we're gonna keep working up, see if we can get another. All right, the kid's on the board with the dragonfly. That was fun. Yeah, bring that, fish. here, big hand that thing, dude. Let's look at the, yeah, let's put it in two pound mode. It's more like a two, right two pound motor. You gotta hide the hand. Yeah, there you go. All right, nice, nice on the dragonfly though. Yeah, big dragonfly for a small fish. Yeah. Anyway, caught it right off one of these mats. We're starting to try to find these weed mats that are further offshore. We're learning. Yeah, based on what we're kind of seeing with the fish and where we're pushing them out of. Well, the fishing has been really, really tough. We got a few small ones and we got one lunker on video and then. We had we got one other real nice one that the battery ran out about the time we were netting it and landing it. But we've pretty much just gone to fishing a dragonfly, just trying to catch bass of any size. Like even the leech fishing for these smaller bass have been. Oh yeah, look at this, dude! They're jumping at the dragonflies. This water is so glassy. Nice cast. We're just trying to catch these smaller bass on the dragonfly, and they have been so spooky. It's so rarely this calm out here. Hey, you can see the bass pushing water out there off the, the weed mat. It's a good cast. You make fun of me? No, dude, you're snagged up and that muskrat's laughing at you right now. Oh, oh. Dude, did you not even see that muskrat? Yeah, there's a muskrat swimming right by you. I thought you were casting kind of close to it. I was like, dude, why is he... Is he trying to hook the muskrat? No, nah, dude, you're too busy getting snagged in the tree. You have been putting the beat down. Do a little update. He has been putting a... About 15 fish that are about four ounces each. It's a blast on that popper. He actually has been putting a beat down on him on the popper. I mean, it really came to life. Nothing real big, but... I got it back up out of here. Nothing real big, but um, a lot of action on the surface, so... Happens every time as the lights go down. Bass are like that. I caught a massive crappie. Dude, that is a nice a crappie. On a popper too. Crappie are always like, man, they're like an they're evening weird. species. That is a wow. really nice one on a bass popper. Yeah, hold that. Compared to my. Yeah, hold that baby up. He hammered a Ooh, popper. That's a dinner plate of a crappie. Yeah, nice one, Jake. Boy, it's still beautiful and calm out here. Man, just a glassy evening. The fish are really. Fish are really starting to bite now. Well, the big ones are still still snoozing, but uh, yeah, nice crappie. Well done. So this last clip took place uh, right at the end of the night. We'd actually shut the mic off, uh, so we don't have any audio. So here I am narrating it. Anyway, this fish absolutely exploded on the big number two gorilla dragon. I mean, that fly, I've caught lots of big bass on that fly for whatever reason they just love those dragonflies so hook this bass right at the end of the day we'd essentially quit and actually shut the like i said the mics off um so we didn't have any sound but super great way to finish the day and uh, there have been dragonflies on the water all day but it makes a huge difference getting that low light if you got a bass like near your house pond any kind of still water those dragonflies are one of the most underrated yeah, it's just an absolutely great bass. Um, I was just super happy. I wish my son had got this one, but he was putting a beat down on a whole bunch of crappie. He found a big school of crappie, and he was throwing that little dragonfly at him. But, yeah, bass was, I'd say, over five pounds. Um, just absolute specimen, beautiful sunset, and uh, to catch it on a true dry fly was pretty spectacular.